Hello there, my name is Miss Red Nebula and welcome to my Game Dev in Progress Diary number 4. So I kinda skipped a week. That was pretty much because the news for Planet Zoo dropped and I was so excited that I had to make a video for that and ended up not doing one for this. So in the last video I was talking about how at, at this point I think I want to go ahead and start making my own kind of games rather than just following tutorials. Mind you, as soon as I said that, the 2019 version of Unity dropped and they introduced a few more tutorials that look really interesting, so we'll see. If I do end up doing something I'll probably show a little bit of it off and otherwise it's gonna kind of be stuff that I'm working on from now on, I think. So back in the first Dev Diary video that I did, I did show that I had been working a little bit on a game related to pinball. It seemed like it'd be an interesting sort of thing to start with because you've got relatively simple mechanics to it, um, mainly using physics and stuff. So looking at the way the physics engine worked, I thought, oh, you know, this kind of thing would be really easy, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> It, no, nothing's especially simple when it comes to physics, it, as it turns out. There's considerations like how how does rotation work when you're in a 3D space, and then you learn about things like quaternions. I think I'm pronouncing that right. All I know is that they're kind of confusing, and, and figuring out how exactly to make rotations work is a surprisingly big hurdle, but I did get it. As you saw in the first video, I already had one of the flippers working. So what I wanted to do was take that same script and instead of just repeating the exact same script over two different scripts for the left flippers and the right flippers, I wanted to use that base script and make a sort of child script off of it that would tell it, okay, this is a right flipper, do this with it. This is a left flipper, do this with it. Which of course led to some sort of funny stuff uh, as, as I was first playing around with the concept. But after a little while I was able to get everything to work right, and as you can see the left mouse button now controls the left flipper properly, and the right mouse button controls the right flipper. I was thinking whether I wanted to have this be controlled by the mouse buttons or have it controlled by like the A and D keys like you would typically do in a WASD setup. I'm not actually sure, I do want to add a sort of tilt mechanic and I thought that that might be where the A and D keys come into it. We'll see. I do still have my ball set up where I can roll it around so I can set it to go somewhere if I want to test how a certain thing is working. It's a little bit awkward because that's not really what I want to have done with it. I want it to actually fall down due to gravity, but you can see that everything's working as it should be. <laughs> I'll show a gravity version in a little bit that, that actually shows this a lot better. I also for the moment took out that camera follow script, which is actually something that I want to have in the final game, but when I started thinking about how did I want to put this together, it seemed like the best idea to start with would be to actually create something more akin to a standard pinball table, get all of the mechanics working the way that I want to, and then start on my concept for what I actually want to do with this game. Here I was also doing a little more work on these bumpers to make them a little more functional, and of course then you got the difference between the round bumpers which will hit the ball in a direction that whichever whichever way the ball hit them they will give you a force in the opposite direction of that whereas you've got the kickers down here these um, sort of slingshot not really bumpers but they kind of act in a similar way but only the front side of them will affect the ball at all and it will only push it in a direction opposite of where the ball hits that forward surface. The ball's also got a bit of a bounce to it now I added with some physics materials, and it's also got a little less friction so it moves around the playing field more like you'd expect. Before it was kind of just hitting a wall and that was it, but now it actually bounces off of them appropriately. And one nice thing about Unity is that if you add a public variable to your script, you're actually able to change the value of that variable right over here in the sidebar, so I could make uh, the bumpers a lot less powerful or more powerful really easily. So that was actually me changing this bottom bumper, which is this one here. And now if I hit one of the bumpers that I didn't change, you know, I've got quite a, quite a good amount of bounce going off of that but there's a much subtler bounce there. And now it should be a crazy huge bounce. <laughs> there it goes. 
Oh yeah, and while I'm on that subject, I also had some interesting interesting things happen with the collisions and stuff. As it turns out, if, if an object is moving very, very quickly, like, say, a pinball tends to get moving very, very quickly, sometimes its collision can occur too late. Like, in this case, okay, so this bumper is still set up with mad, huge, crazy amounts of force, right? So when I hit it, See how the ball just flew out the top of the uh, of the playing field completely. Now I can't access the ball anymore because it's way out there somewhere. I had to play around with and research how the different types of collisions work. So as it turns out, that's just a case of since the ball is moving and the walls are not and these pieces are not, then I can change the ball to use continuous uh, collision detection and it will make it so that no matter what, it, it's always checking to see is that ball currently or about to hit something, and so it keeps it within the playing field. And the next iteration was basically taking things a little bit more in the direction of, hey, this is looking more familiar like a pinball table. I added the inlanes and the outlanes, uh, where the inlanes lead down to the flippers down at the bottom, and the outlines will basically be where once the ball falls down there, it's, it's gone and off the playing field and you have to start again. And I've got my uh, my slingshots set up just above them, uh, like you see on pretty much every pinball table, I think, in existence. I also added a, a sort of plunger mechanism. Now, it's not going to move or anything, but it does apply a force when I hit the space bar like so. And right now I just restart it whenever the ball falls below the playing field. There is also a little bit of a randomization to how hard the plunger forces the ball out. It's got a plus or minus a certain amount that can be set up uh, programmatically so that it's not just going to the exact same place every time. Like physics in the real world kind of has that chaos theory going on like they described in Jurassic Park, where it's just tiny little variations can make the outcome completely different. You don't really have that when you're dealing with something that a computer is designing. Like if the ball is in exactly the same place and you apply the exact same force to it every single time, the path that that ball takes will always be 100% the same. So if you add a little bit of a randomization to it, you get a much more natural effect. And it doesn't have to be much. It's like, I think I've got like a plus or minus 500 to, I believe the force is something like 50,000. And that's enough to give it enough randomization to feel very natural. <laughs> and, and occasionally the ball still goes down the lane where it started off with the plunger, even though it's got the lane goes all the way up to the top. That's just part of it right now. I, I will add a sort of gate, and I need to research exactly how do they keep that from happening in a normal pinball machine. And speaking of research, that was also what took up rather a lot of time this week, was that I was watching all sorts of different pinball machines being played on YouTube. I was watching people talking about how they built their own pinball machines, how all of the different mechanisms worked and everything. And oh boy, in the last two weeks, I have learned more about pinball than I ever thought was even a thing. Like I had no idea how complex the programs on some of these games can be and how different, how different ones I, like, like I always just assumed, you know, like most filthy casuals like me, that a pinball machine's a pinball machine, you know? You, you let the ball go and try to hit it with the flippers and hope that it doesn't fall down. I didn't realize that you had different, like, like different levels almost, where a lot of machines will have like, okay, this is your objective to do right now, here's these certain targets. And when you hit all three of these targets, then this will open up for you to do, and then you can get additional points. And uh, it's really quite extraordinary. I, I didn't realize just how marvelously complicated these machines are. And I, I do certainly understand why people are so very passionate about them. It's 
it's hard not to get caught up in it, in it a little bit. So yeah, research ends up being a big part of this kind of thing. You know, if, if I want to do something based around pinball, even though my final goal isn't going to be a standard pinball table like you see here, I, I think that I would like to incorporate a lot of those elements into it. And like with the ball, I actually did have a bit of the same problem with the flippers, because they're not a static object. The ball interacting with them would sometimes also have a problem, though sometimes the ball, even though it would hit everything else reliably and not fall through any of the other scenery, would still sometimes find its way through the flipper as the flipper was moving. The computer didn't have time to recognize that the flipper and the ball were intersecting, so that again turned out to be a different sort of collision detection for rotating objects. So this ends up looking pretty similar, and for the most part it is, but I did add a couple of new features to it that are, that are pretty cool. I mean, you can see them, I've got a scoreboard up in the corner, and there's also a fail state, now, which, which will both show a message and also restart the game. So let's see if I can keep going for a little while without failing, so I can show you the scoring first, and then we'll see what it looks like when I completely fail, which I'm very good at with this game. You can see when I hit any of the bumpers. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, there, I failed. <laughs> So it shows the down the drain message, and of course when, when a pinball goes down the hole at the bottom, that's called draining, you would typically um, I get a, another ball, I think it's like three balls normally, and then um, there's different methods that you can get additional balls, so I want to work that into the ideas for the, the final game a little bit more. But of course now we've got, we don't have to stop and restart the game every time we want to start playing again. Right now it just simply resets the score and allows you to start over again. And of course right now everything's set up in a very rudimentary sort of way. <laughs> okay, I cannot talk and play at the same time. I'll probably just record some footage of me playing so I can actually concentrate on it, and I'm just going to keep talking for the moment so you can enjoy whatever's going on in the background right now. Um, in, in any case, uh, it's like, what was I even saying? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, the setup is, is very rudimentary right now. There's no real strategy, there's no goals or anything like that. It's just hit the bumpers and, and, the, uh, and the kickers as many times as you possibly can before you fail. <laughs> All the different things that I want to uh, include are like ramps and stuff like that and spinners and all of the different types of effects that are really cool and of course some fun stuff as well because a lot of these machines have things that are unique to just that machine uh, like haunted houses or all of the, the really cool stuff in like the Adams Family one and again I've got everything set up just as a, a relatively standard pinball field right now no bells and whistles nothing nothing pretty right now an end goal would be to have all of the different parts look a lot more customized to this, different theming and stuff like that. Uh, the board itself, to have lights, to have the little holes that you can, uh, it'll drop down into and then get kicked back out of, all sorts of stuff like that. So this is just learning the program, learning what can I do with this, and just uh, come, come and get with this concept of, okay, pinball seems like it'd be fun, let's see what I can do with it. One thing you might notice is that when that down the drain message plays, it's actually not just popping up, but it's fading in. And so that was something else that I was learning how to use some of the animations and stuff to make things just look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more dynamic than just having it only display a message. And of course, right now, a lot of the physics is not exactly the way that I want it, and that's part of building this out like this in a, in a just a standard pinball table setup is that I can make adjustments as I go and figure out, okay, how how hard a force do I want the bumpers to hit with? How fast do this, does the flipper need to move? How uh, much bounciness does the ball actually have? Because you'll notice in some of this that I can't really catch the ball on the flipper, which is a fairly standard thing that you'd see happen in pinball. And incidentally, I should also mention that even though it kind of looks like the whole playing field is tilted down towards the player, in this case it's actually not. Everything that you're seeing is completely flat. I've just applied a constant force to the ball to simulate gravity. So that means that instead of relying on the gravity that you have with physics objects inside of Unity to begin with, I actually have full control over how much 
gravity is affecting the ball, so I can change that variable as well. So don't take any of the physics as it is right now as being what I intend the final game to look like. All of this is going to be, you know, play tested to the moon and back because that's what you do. And likewise, the scoring system right now is just set up to give 10 points every time you hit any of the bumpers, no matter what. But of course, that all is very much changeable as well. And I know a lot of these have scoring systems that are not only you can get a lot more points than that, but the points of, say, a bumper depends on whether or not it's currently lit and what the situation might cause it to be lit. And then you've got things like the um, bullseye targets that you get in some games that will actually have, like, you hit the outside of it and you get one value, but if you can hit it dead center, you'll actually get a higher value. So again, all, all things that I think would be really fun to incorporate into something like this, and hopefully have it turn into a pretty fun game uh, just on its own. So that's it. Feel free to like, comment, or subscribe if you want to follow along, and check out my Patreon for sneak peeks and other perks. A big thank you to my current patrons. That's all for now. Bye!